they're venomous. They hide in plain sight, and they bite more people than any other venomous snake in the country. But the question is, do you really need to fear the copperhead? Copperheads are infamous across the United States, and as one of the country's most commonly encountered venomous snakes, it's not hard to see why. These invisible assassins are masters of camouflage, and their tendency to sit perfectly still even when threatened means that humans often get way too close to them without even realizing it. This has led copperheads to bite nearly 3,000 people each year, around half of all venomous snake bites in the US. But today, we want to show you another side of copperheads that could totally change how you see these snakes. My name is Evan, and this is Harrison. We're twin brothers on a mission to make you an insider in the natural world, and a big part of that is showing you the true purpose of the strangest and scariest features that animals have. To see for ourselves if copperheads are actually worth fearing, our friend Zach brought us to a rural road in southern Mississippi that he knows is a hot spot for these vipers, and this spot did not disappoint. We patrolled the area for a while, but not long after the sun sank below the horizon, we spotted the unmistakable pattern of the snake we'd been searching for. All right, we're rolling. Hey, buddy. He looks a little bit young. This copperhead is not as big as they get. We are gonna get this guy right off the road. This is not a safe place to be working with this animal. Hi there. All right, we need to get this guy out. There's a little power cut back here. We'll take him over there, just so we don't have anything else. Come along, take this guy out. He's a beautiful snake. You good, Zach? How's going? Awesome. There he is. And now we're off the road somewhere where we can take a better look at this animal. And this is something we have really been hoping to look at. The most commonly encountered venomous snake in all of the United States, especially where we're from, this is the Eastern Copperhead. These guys can be found in over half of the United States. Actually, 28 states will get copperheads, so it is very common for people to encounter these vipers. Now, he's being pretty calm right now. He's obviously very disoriented. There are a lot of lights. There are big heat signatures around us that he can sense with those heat-sensing pits at the front of his face. So he's very aware of the situation he's in, and he's not too happy about it, which is why we absolutely need to be on guard when we're working with this animal. That's right. Now, now, where we found him is pretty much exactly where we expected to see a copperhead at this time of day and at this time of year. During the spring and summer, these vipers are quite active at night, and he was crossing the road doing one of two things. He was either thermoregulating, trying to get some heat before he goes out and hunts for the night, or he was already on the business of trying to get something to eat. Now what we want to do here is get this guy on the ground briefly so you can see how well that patterning creates his camouflage. When we put him down into the leaf litter here in all these pine needles, they just absolutely disappear. These are incredibly camouflaged snakes, and that is actually one of his best adaptations for survival out here. It's one of his greatest hunting tools and one of his best defense mechanisms, and he relies on it every single day to survive. The copperhead's intricate pattern breaks up their body's outline and makes them much harder to spot when they're sitting among the dead leaves and sticks on the forest floor, an adaptation called disruptive coloration. Not only does this help them avoid conflict with predators, it's also vital to their ambush hunting technique. Copperheads will sit motionless for hours or even days at a time, waiting for unsuspecting prey to wander close enough to strike. But their strikes can only reach as far as about half their body length, so really no more than half a meter at most. You need some really effective camouflage to let prey get that close without being detected, so it makes sense why copperheads have totally perfected the art of staying hidden in plain sight. 
Now we can actually tell that this is a subadult because if you look at the underside of his tail, he still has a little bit of that yellow coloration that they only have as juveniles. That is a caudal lure, which they use to attract prey. Essentially what they do is they stick that little yellow tail tip up and they wiggle it back and forth to attract small rodents or lizards, things like that. And once their prey gets close, they'll reach out with those fangs and inject them with that infamous venom. Now actually, you may be surprised to learn that the venom of the copperhead is actually the weakest of all North American pit vipers. It's really best suited for taking down their prey, but it's not a super strong defensive option relative to a lot of the other snakes that exist in North America. However, this is not by any means a bite that we can take lightly. This is still absolutely a medically significant snake, and we have to treat it as such. Absolutely, this is an animal that we would consider to be potentially potentially dangerous, and the reason for that is the way the venom affects your body. It's not very likely to kill you, but they have a cytotoxic and hemotoxic venom. So what it does is it'll start to destroy any cells that the venom comes in contact with, both your red blood cells and just your tissue in general. It will cause extreme pain, swelling, nausea, and in worst cases, necrosis that can even lead to amputation of whatever got bitten. And in very, very rare cases, death has been known to occur from the bite of the copperhead. It's not very common, but it is absolutely a possibility. This is a snake you must take seriously. It is highly venomous, just like any of the other pit vipers here in North America. So just because it's the weakest does not mean that the bite is weak in any way. Their relatively mild venom toxicity means that today, copperhead bites are rarely ever fatal and widely available treatment allows the worst symptoms to be avoided in most cases. Many people are still terrified of this snake though because they think that any encounter with one will lead to an attack. But digging into how they use their venom day to day shows why this idea actually doesn't make a whole lot of sense. As ambush predators that aren't super fast moving, copperheads face the challenge of catching prey like small mammals, lizards, or frogs that are faster and more agile than they are. Their solution is simple. They've evolved venom potent enough to stop prey in its tracks, so they don't have to waste valuable energy chasing it down. Not only does it help them catch their food, but without venom, they actually can't digest it. So their toxins are really the key to how they get their meals. And the truth is, copperheads don't have a huge amount of venom to begin with, and it takes a lot of time and energy to produce more after they use it. The last thing they want to do is waste this critical resource on a predator, especially because it's not likely to stop the threat in time to save their life anyway. Venom is not a weapon meant to hurt us. It's the main tool that they use to feed themselves. So using it for anything else is an absolute last resort. Now there is one more thing we have left to do with this animal, and that is clear the name of this infamous but really misunderstood snake. And the way we want to do that is by proving that these animals are not aggressive. What I find amazing about this animal is he's young, he's small. This is probably the first time he's ever been this close to not only one human, but three humans. And yet he is just trying to get away and his movements are not erratic right now. He's not striking. He's almost not even in defense mode anymore. All that tongue flicking there, he's getting a read on our sense. He's figuring everything out. These snakes think, they feel, and he's not doing everything in his power to hurt us. He's doing everything in his power to get away. Now, what you have to understand is in a scenario like this, the behaviors we're seeing are in no way aggressive. This animal is scared for its life. He can tell just from the size of our heat signatures alone that we're much bigger than him and there is no way he could win in this fight. Even if he were to get a bite off, there's no way the venom would incapacitate us faster than we could stomp him to death. So his only prerogative right now is to escape. He wants to get out of this situation as fast as possible. And that's exactly what he's gonna try and do. Anytime he comes towards us, it's not because he's chasing us or anything like that. It's because we're currently sitting between this snake and his habitat. But the way that he's moving tells me that he's figured out that he's not in imminent danger of being eaten. He no longer sees us as the predators that he did when we first pulled him off the road. 
and I think at this point we've gotten everything we need from him and it's time to get this guy back into the environment where he belongs, hopefully to never run into a person again. But look at that. Is that an animal that's trying to kill us right now? Certainly not, but what it is, is one of the most gorgeous snakes we possibly could have found tonight. One of my favorite vipers to work with, actually. This is just such a special interaction. The double hook is also great. This is our first copperhead here in Mississippi. One of the snakes that we came down here to find, and I couldn't imagine a better way to get to spend time with our first copperhead in this region than to find a choice little subadult, which means the population is growing. And that, despite how many people feel around here, that is what we want to see. It is definitely time to get this copperhead back into its habitat, well away from the road. Like Harrison said, hopefully never to interact with another human again, if he's lucky. Actually, this is good right here because he's a little bit of cover. All things considered, you are a really good sport, buddy. So thank you for that. We'll let him start tracking back into the woods and hopefully he can still get a good hunt in tonight while the conditions are good. But that is so cool. So here's the real question. Is the copperhead a snake that you actually have to fear? Truthfully, the answer is absolutely not. We've consistently found copperheads to be timid and inoffensive snakes that will only bite if they think their life is actively in danger. And with just a bit of knowledge about their habits, avoiding a situation in which they feel that scared is pretty simple. Their camouflage and tendency to sit still when threatened means that you really have to be aware of these snakes when you're in their range. But if you get into the habit of looking out for them and paying attention as you explore so you don't step on one, you can prevent most negative interactions before they even start. The better you understand their biology and behavior, the easier it is to navigate encounters safely. And when you know why they have their venom and why they're not likely to use it on you, they become a whole lot less scary. That said though, if you're not quite convinced and you're still nervous about snakes, we have a video that I think will be able to help. While exploring down in Ecuador, we encountered a special snake known as the Snail Eater that is said to be one of the calmest snakes in the world. So friendly, in fact, that they literally never bite people we believe that they could actually cure your fear of snakes. So if you want to hear their full story and maybe change the way you see snakes forever, check out this video, where we take a closer look at these incredibly unique animals. And with that, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one.